you know, the fluids and nutrients in there. If there's pesticides all over that stuff, theoretically you're concentrating the pesticides too, and then you're ingesting those. Um, so, a couple things. A, how do you get the pesticides off? And B, which foods have the least pesticides on? Um, if you grow it in your own garden, hopefully they don't have any pesticides on. Um, you know, if you go to the farmer's market around here, we have patients that sell stuff at the farmer's market. I know they, they're not spraying pesticides on it. So if you can get stuff locally or stuff that you grow yourself, that's the best. Um, you're not going to have that stuff on them. It'll be the freshest, too. Um, but here's a list. I don't know if anybody have heard what's called the Dirty Dozen list, but the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they put out a list every year, um, and they test the foods for the amount of pesticides on them. And the, the 12 with the most pesticides, they call them the dirty dozen, and they publish those lists. So this is the most recent dirty dozen list. So, you know, apples, peaches, bell peppers, celery, um, grapes, those are big ones. Um, you know, you, you can read those there. So if, if that's a big concern to you, here's my suggestion. Um, buy organic stuff if you like that stuff or buy the farmers market if it's in season you can do that um, that would be the first suggestion second will be if you're really worried about it don't eat those things find other things to eat um, third thing I'll talk about here in a few minutes is to, to learn how to wash the stuff you buy really well to get as much of that off as you can that way even if you're not buying organic stuff or you buy stuff that might have been sprayed, you, sprayed you, can, you can get a lot of that off of there. And I'll talk to you about a few ways that people have tested to, to really do that effectively and get, get a large portion of that off there. Um, no, let's go forward. That's good. The, uh, the Clean 15, that, they also publish a list with the 15 most you know, common foods with the least pesticides on them. Um, I don't juice onions, and I had somebody who actually, uh, I talked about juicing a while back, and, uh, and they went home and they, they put an onion in the juicer and they were trying to get their wife to drink or something like that. It's like, don't juice an onion and try to make somebody drink that. Now, I'm not saying that's not good for you, but don't, don't juice an onion. You're, that's not the point. You want it to be fun to taste good there. You don't really taste like that. So, um, I don't really juice onions. I don't juice corn. I don't really juice avocados. but. I mean, you can look at those there, and those are ones with very little residues. So kiwi, melons, um, pineapples are a good one. We're going to have some pineapple here. Grapefruit, they're a good one. Um, they don't have that much on them. So if you want to steer more towards the low pesticide foods for stuff where you're eating the, the skin or things like that, you know, you can do that too. So how to, how to get them off? I basically already talked about buying the organic stuff. Um, that's a picture of a soap. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Dr. Bronner's Magic Soap. But um, you can use liquid dish soap, like the uh, stuff you normally buy, to get the pesticides off. Now, as far as, let's say we have this celery. Celery was on the dirty dozen list, right? So the people who grow this, they might take a sprayer and they might spray this stuff to keep the bugs off and that type of thing. When they make those pesticides, they're all designed to be fat soluble, right? So what does that mean? It doesn't mix with water. They want it to stick to the kind of the outer cell wall, which is basically a, an oil or type of a, a chemical there. So they're all fat soluble in general, and they're going to stick to the plant. If you just rinse it with water, water is not going to mix with that with that you know fat soluble chemical. So you need to have something that's able to dissolve you know fatty type of stuff. Just like if you want if you cook a bunch of meat in a pan and you just rinse it off with water, you're not getting that grease off that pan, right? you, you got to use your dish soap or something like that to dissolve that stuff off there. Same with the pesticide. You're going to have to use something that actually traps those fats and surrounds them and, and gets rid of them. So um, one way to do that is soap. However, you know, if you have your nice bright pink or blue or yellow soap that you use at home on your dishes, there's probably a dye in there. It's also a, it's just a chemical. It's not really a natural type of thing. Whereas you can get soaps that are made from just organic oils and they, sapon they saponify them with um, sodium hydroxide and it's basically just a natural oil that they've, they've gone through the soap making process. So um, that's what I do is I keep a bottle of that stuff under my counter. Um, it's a liquid soap so you just get a couple of drops It lathers up really good. I can put a couple of drops on my hand and probably get like eight apples pretty well lathered up with it. Um, so it'll last a long time. Um, compared to regular soap that's more expensive but um, it, it's a good way to do that, and you're not going to be putting another chemical on top of your stuff to try and get other chemicals off it like you would be doing with a regular dish soap there. Where can you get that stuff? 
I would bet that you can get it at health food stores in the area. Um, you can look at it on Amazon. I know you can get it there. You can get it at you know, Whole Foods Market or places like that. But you, you'll be able to find it um, and, and get that. That's a good way to do that. Uh, I have a couple other notes in there. You can use apple cider or baking soda as well. Um, so when they test these versus just using water, if you use an apple cider vinegar solution, it gets a lot more of that fat-soluble pesticide off. Water is a neutral chemical molecule. Apple cider is an acid. Anything that has a charge and stuff to it is going to be more effective in attracting those fat-soluble molecules and starting to pull them off there. So um, one thing I do is I actually use baking soda more, common, more commonly. Um, baking soda is the opposite. It's not an acid. It's a, it's a basic type of a molecule. And so you can buy big bags of that baking soda, like at Sam's Clubs and things like that. Um, and just fill the sink up with, your, with some water, put your vegetables in there, put a bunch of baking soda in there, let it sit for a while, and then scrub them. And as it sits on there and then you loosen it with a, with a scrubber, which I'll talk about in a minute, you'll, you'll get more of that stuff on there. So those are all relatively cheap, effective ways to do it. Um, that's, those are the ways I do it myself, is I usually use the soap. Um, sometimes I use baking soda too. All right. uh, most people are familiar with a vegetable brush. Um, when you actually use a brush like that, and actually didn't bring a brush tonight, but um, if you actually were to take these and you scrub that brush on them, it's going to physically loosen um, a the pesticide, especially if you've already put the soap or something on it and it's attract you know surrounded it. You start to scrub it, it's going to start to loosen it, and then it'll rinse better. The other issue is. Um, we have any apples here? We need some apples. Um, but let's say this was an apple. You know how they put, like cucumbers too, a lot of times they put uh, a, a little wax on the mm -hmm. cucumber or the apple. Um, wax is not going to come off when you put water on it, right? But if you put the soap or the detergent on it and you let that sit and then you scrub it, that wax will actually start to loosen. And I, I've done it enough that I can tell a difference in the feel in the apple after I do that prior to doing that. Um, so I haven't somehow looked under a microscope and figured out what's on there. But, you know, palpably you can, you can tell there's some difference there. It is effective um, when people have, have studied this. So it does work. It's definitely better than just <coughs> leaving it all on there, okay? Um, when to do that? I wouldn't do it until right before I juice. So I wouldn't buy the stuff and then scrub it up and then put it in the fridge because um, you, you might kind of break open some of the edge of the stuff and maybe it turns brown or things like that. So you want it to stay fresh. I usually put it in the sink rinse it or soak it for a few minutes, then I scrub it, rinse it again thoroughly, and then I juice it right before I juice it. So that's how I do it. Um, okay, this kind of goes with what I just talked about. So how to wash it. Let's, let's dummy proof it. What do you do? Clear your sink out. Make sure the sink itself is clean. So you don't want you know soap scum in your sink when you're going to wash your vegetables. You don't want food particles in there. So uh, you know, I actually take a cloth and wipe my sink out and then run water over it and rinse it or maybe even do a little soap or something like that and clean your sink out. Rinse it, let that stuff go down the drain. Then plug your sink and fill it with some water. Um, you need to get enough that it basically covers the fruits or vegetables. It doesn't need to be all the way full. Um, now, I have really hard water at my house, so I don't like putting the soap directly into the water because it like just disappears with all the calcium carbonate in there. But if you have a water softener and your water's not really hard, you could probably put some of that soap I showed you in there and it'll lather up pretty good <coughs> and you can do that. Um, when I put the baking soda in there, I just fill the sink with water, I put a bunch of baking soda in there and, and do it that way and you kind of need to stir it to get that baking soda to start to dissolve in there because otherwise it'll just sit at the bottom. Um, so that's how you do that. And then you can put your fruits and vegetables in there. You usually want to let them soak for a while. Um, it, it takes some time if you have a hard waxy coating on something for that stuff to, to get in there enough. Um, the longer you put that in there, the more of that stuff you'll be able to get off. So I don't let it sit in there all day, but I probably give it a lot of times around five minutes where I'll fill the sink up, put the stuff in there, do something else for five minutes until it's ready, then I'll scrub it, and then I'll do it. So that's the way I do that. I think that's a good way to do that. Um, after you get it out, you want to scrub it good, and then you want to rinse it real good because you don't want to get soap left over, whatever's in there. You, you want to rinse it real good um, before you juice it. So rinse it thoroughly after you, after you scrub it. Uh, 